In today's video, we're playing a spicy donation deck from Quentin Coleman, John did the Epic Storm featuring Tinderwall. You're gonna wanna see this. What is Tinderwall? Well, if you're unfamiliar with this Ice Age common, for one green, you get a 0-3 wall creature. You could sacrifice it, add two red, pay a red, sacrifice it, deal two to a creature that it's blocked this turn. That line, not super relevant to the Epic Storm, but what is relevant is that it's a spell that you can play pre-Galvanic Relay to make Storm, and then post-Galvanic Relay, it adds mana. That is why Quentin Coleman was so excited about this card within the Epic Storm. My concern is that we're cutting Brainstorm, a card that adds consistency for more mana. We're going to see how that plays out today. But one nice feature of this Jund list is that you get a main deck Beseju who endures, a card that I'm a big fan of in the Epic Storm. So now you have a main deck way of beating Chalice of the Void that isn't Burning Wish into Pulverize. Let's say you're completely unfamiliar with the Epic Storm. We're primarily a Burning Wish based deck that gets Peer into the Abyss or wins with Ad Nauseum that can be found with Infernal Tutor. Eventually we end the game with Tundra's of Agony or Grape Shot. I hope you enjoyed the video today. It's going to be a good one. I will see you in the first match. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to our match number one. We're on the draw, and while we've opened up both Galvanic Relay, here it is, and Tinderwall, just like Quentin planned, we will keep. No clue what our opponent's playing, but this hand seems fairly good. Looks like they're on Reanimator. They target themselves, and they have turn one Gristlebrand. Yikes. Okay, so this hand is not good versus Grosso Brand, I'll say that much. Okay, turn one, the demon enters the battlefield. They have no hand, they pay seven, draw seven. Now they're at 12, they go to five. So they have 14 cards in hand, and they're unmasked grief deck. There's a grief removing Grosso Brand from the game. And now they're likely to take our Galvanic Relay. As we suspected, Relay goes to the graveyard. They have 12 cards in hand. Another grief. Okay. They choose right of flame this time. I think Bobble was probably the take there. Or they have a third one as well. Jeez Louise. Okay. Let's see what they do on this one. All right. So these, I think, were actually the two best cards in the hand after relay. And they left us with both. They have a Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal. Do you have a reanimate for the fourth grief? They do not. Okay, so we have to hope that they don't find another discard spell. I wish this was the top of our deck because that could give us a potential to win. But we need them to not discard us, which seems unlikely. They attack with Gristlebrand. We'll go to 13. They'll go all the way up to 12. They entomb for our kind of cruelty. Okay. They reanimate the Archon. We will discard the Wooded Foothills. Oh, they get our Tinder Wall! <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. So, we have to draw Red Source Lion's Eye Diamond? Oh, no. The fact that they got our Tinder Wall with the Archon of Cruelty is just backbreaking here. Okay, that's going to eliminate us from the game. I will concede to the unmask. What a start for the opponent. Okay, so we're on the draw, or this time we're on the play versus reanimator. We're going to board out two copies of Galvanic Relay, and we'll bring in a couple copies of Thoughtseize. I still like one when on the play. On the draw, I think it's too slow. Um, and then Veil of Summer is good against them. I don't really want to board those out. We have a peer, or Abrupt Decay hiding down here, but we don't want to board those in anyway. So I think that this is likely what we want to do in this matchup. I'm going to click Submit. On the play for game number two. A little bit slow, but we have the Veil of Summer. I'm going to try it. We need to find a Lion's Eye Diamond off of the Bobble or the Veil of Summer if we want to win this. We'll play Wooded Foothills, Bobble. 
pass the turn. Basic Swamp Dark Ritual. Okay, and Tomb. Good start for them. Iona. Yikes, our deck cannot beat an Iona on red. This isn't that popular anymore, so the fact that they're playing it is a little bit odd, but obviously very good against us. And they name red. I cannot win the game. I will concede. Uh, our deck only has Burning Wish to cast, so we just flat out lose to Iona. Unfortunately, we're 0 and 1, but match number 2 is coming up in just a moment. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, we're on the play. Actually, I can't read, we're on the draw. All right, so we'll keep this anyway. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I would have liked to have been on the play, but this hand is just fine. Tropical Island into Ponder, okay. They kept off their Ponder. Ooh, that was a good one. Play out Taiga. Let's bobble ourselves, see what we have coming on top. Another Rite of Flame. I'm going to pass the turn. I don't think jamming on turn one is super helpful. And next turn, I can just tap two lands and play Burning Wish. And there's a chance they let it resolve it. And then we just grab Relay instead of forcing myself into a situation where I'm playing out my entire hand in order to be countered. So they play a Tundra into Life from the Loam. You've got it. This hand screams Force Will to me. Tinder Wall. So. Here, nothing against Quentin, but I would have preferred a Brainstorm in this particular spot, looking for protection. We'll just tap two lands in Burning Wish. Let's see if we're fortunate enough to be able to get Galvanic Relay. And we are. Okay. Grab the Relay. Pass. So I could go Lotus Petal, Rite of Flame, Rite of Flame, all that good stuff. But that opens me up to losing to Force of Will. The plan here is to not lose to Force of Will. And exercising some patience isn't a bad thing against the control deck. And I think just being overly aggressive is one of the easiest ways you can lose the game. They grab a Taiga. Three mana for a Uro a Titan of Nature's Wrath. You've got it. They put Flooded Strand onto the battlefield and now Uro will go to the graveyard, will draw for turn. Another Lotus Petal. So the fact that Burning Wish resolved is very good for us. Let's attempt a Rite of Flame. Maybe I should have just led on two Rite of Flames to see if they would have forced it. Small uh, error in judgment for me. Play the Tinder Wall. So you might be saying, well, Tinder Wall here is fine with Relay, which is true. I'm not going to argue that it wasn't. But Brainstorm could have potentially been two spells for the Galvanic Relay. So... Storm count versus mana is a thing, and I don't think Quentin's necessarily wrong. I'm just pointing out the differences throughout this league, so that way we can better gauge if Tinderwall or Brainstorm is really right for the slot. And now we have a Galvanic Relay. So a card that our opponent would want here is a main deck Fluster Storm. But even if they had main deck Fluster Storm, we have five, eight mana in play and one floating. We could actually pay for a Fluster Storm on all of the copies. Okay, so the Burning Wish in that top left corner is the Burning Wish we used to get Galvanic Relay. So that means that we have an Infernal Tutor here with no protection as our payoff for next turn. One downside, Source to Plowshares is a live card against us, and there you saw it. So we've created an issue with this deck where you're playing Galvanic Relay in Tender Wall, so that way you can set up for the following turn, but we've now enabled our opponent's creature removal. Narset. Okay. They use the Narset. They find Ponder. This is going to be a prismatic ending on our Lion's Eye Diamond. Oh, they've untapped the Savannah. Maybe not. What are you doing over there? All right, so maybe they want to Ponder first. I don't know what they're up to. They do. Okay, so they'll look at the top three. Different ponder from what they played earlier in the game. 
They did not shuffle on Ponder, so that's two Ponders in a row that they've kept. And now they'll Prismatic Ending or Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay, sure. Draw for turn. Ooh, that was a good one. Okay, so they have three cards. The worst they could have is Force, Blue card, and then, like, I, I can't think of another main deck card that would get us here. So we'll play Badlands. The bottleneck is definitely mana. Mox Opal. Lotus Petal. But it's worth noting, Tinderwall against Narset is better than Brainstorm. I'm willing to admit, in this situation, the Tinderwall is slightly better here. And by slightly, I mean actually useful. Alright, so let's tap the Bayou for Dark Ritual. And then we can tap the Taiga for the Tinder Wall. Burning Wish. This will resolve. So if I grab a Thoughtseize in their hand, it's Force Force Blue card, we lose. If I grab Tendrils, we can Infernal Tutor into Tendrils. That doesn't do it. I think it's supposed to be Thoughtseize Infernal Tutor. But if it's Force Force Blue card, I'm going to feel like a fool. Uh, we don't have Galvanic Relay as an option here. I could empty versus the Uro that's in the graveyard. That doesn't feel good. I think it's just supposed to be Thoughtseize. We'll target them. Force of Will, Endurance, Minsk, and Boo. None of these cards matter. We'll take the Minsk and Boo. Sacrifice the Tinder Wall. And now we can Infernal Tutor Storm 8. We have 5 mana in play with 1 floating, which means we can just grab Burning Wish into Tendrils of Agony. Okay. And there's the Tendrils. So now we just have to cast it by sacrificing our copies of Lotus Petal. Target you. Okay, take that, Hot Bant. And that is game number 1. I board differently for these matchups all the time. Here, I think I'm going to do a mixture where I bring in a couple copies of Abrupt Decay and a few copies of Thoughtseize. In these matchups, I like having the additional protection sometimes, depending on how I think my opponent's deck is constructed. I'm willing to bet that this Hot Bant deck boards up to seven copies of Force of Will. And if that's the case, without Brainstorm, I need more ways of finding my protection. So having additional copies of Thoughtseize will go a long way. And I will shrink the sideboard so you can see the full thing. We do have two more copies of Abrupt Decay in the board. I could side into four copies, but I don't think that's necessary. Okay, well, this hand is certainly awkward. After a deliberation, our opponents decided to take a mulligan. We will do the same. Okay, so here we have a pretty interesting hand. We don't have the second mana source, but we do have Abrupt Decay, Thoughtseize, Diamond, and Tutor, Infernal Tutor. You're supposed to bottom an Infernal Tutor here, which might seem a little bit odd, but you might be saying that because you're like, Bryant, you can go get another copy of Lion's Eye Diamond, and then you have all the mana you need. We're in a post-board game, which means that Surgical Extraction is a card, and I can't afford to search out Diamond and then get my other copy of Infernal Tutor removed from the game. Veil vale of Summer. I'm not going to Thought Seize because they could be holding open Brainstorm here. I'm just going to wait on this just a little bit. They play a Taiga. They're just passing. Maybe they don't have it. Let's fire off the Thoughtseize. Okay. So they don't have the third mana source for Narset. They do have double force. Let's take Force of Negation. Right now we're begging to draw into a second land. They use Scalding Tarn, likely grabbing Tundra, and they do. They found their third land for Narset. Okay. And here she comes. All right, so Narsa is digging here for a blue card. She finds another Force of Will. Okay, draw for turn. It's Veil of Summer. So we are bottlenecked on lands here. My mulligan decision has not mattered. Narsa is used once again, and she misses. Okay, so they have one unknown right now, which was a ponder. They do not shuffle, and they keep. Okay, the Seiju. Let's play that out. I think now I do want to Infernal Tutor for Diamond because I don't need this Infernal Tutor anymore. All right, we have revealed our Diamond. We grab another, pass the turn. Uh-oh, three mana for another Narsa. Okay, not Days Undoing. Good to know. 
So they have one unknown card. So the worst they could have here is Force of Will one time. We drew the Ad Nauseum. That doesn't really matter all that much. I think I'm going to just kill this Narset in my main phase. Let's deny them the extra card and pass the turn. This will open up here into the Abyss later. Would you like to Force of Will my Abrupt Decay? Come on. Come on. Please? It won't go poorly for you, I promise. They have land four. All right, so they have two unknowns now, so it could be double force. They'll get a hamster. I would like to draw a green source here. That's a green source. Boom. We're going to attempt to win the game now. Veil of Summer. They force pitching force. Let's Veil of Summer again. That resolves. Veil of Summer happens. Beautiful. So we have Peer into the Abyss here, but we also might just have a natural storm win. Rite of Flame. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond. We're going to hold con uh, control. Cast Burning Wish. Sacrifice this diamond. Why not? We'll sacrifice this one too. Okay. And now we will grab our 10 Drills of Agony. Span that sideboard just a little bit so I don't misclick. And there we go. That is match number two. We are officially one and one. I'd love to see it. Click, click. Sweet. I will see you in match number three. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. I am the worst. I misclicked on record going into the third match, so we're just going to do a, a live replay before I record match four. We will hit play and just go through it. So this hand is great because we have Tinderwall and we have the Galvanic Relay that Quentin was so excited about. Our opponent plays a turn one green sun zenith for dryad arbor i'm a little bit worried about collector oof so i played the mishra's bobble and if they have green sun here i get an extra card out of my bobble you could have held it for storm but bobble's so likely to find a spell that replaces itself and we actually find lion's eye diamond they don't have turn two collector oof and we get to just galvanic relay for a ton here by a ton i mean five so we relay it ends up being three lands tinderwall burning wish they play a Dark Depths, and they're representing the win, but we have exactly enough mana to peer into the Abyss, and our opponent concedes after we play a few spells. And that, my friends, is game number one. Game number two, we're on the draw, and while well, I'll be honest with you, this game is even faster. So if we had to pick a round to miss, it's definitely this one. They mulligan to five, they play turn one Elvish Reclaimer, we draw a Dark Ritual, and I decide that I am not going to respect Mind Break Trap. We just go all in, ad nauseum, turn one floating two mana, we draw like 20 plus cards, and we play a couple cards post ad nauseum, and our opponent can see. Once again, this was a super fast match. I Neither time did they make me put Tendrils of Agony on the stack, they just conceded, and uh, it was probably under a five minute match. Like my round timer was at 22 minutes when the match ended. So it was wonderful. And uh, I'll see you in match number four. We are two in one. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Match number four, and let me check. We are recording. How crazy is that? We're on the draw again. We've been on the draw a lot this league. And we've opened up an unplayable, unkeepable seven card hand. We will mulligan. Okay, we've opened up a better second hand. We will keep and bottom the dark ritual. We're keeping the bobbles because the redraws with the galvanic relay. So we just want to find land number two here or even a lotus petal. Turn one Urza Saga. Sure. Ooh, they're on the Carnforge deck. Yikes. We'll draw for turn. Another diamond. Okay, so I can't risk not drawing the payoff next turn. So I'm going to play out the bobbles here. 
which actually might be fine because if I draw like Land Infernal Tutor or just Burning Wish, we have a win. And the Carnforge deck often plays Echo of Aeons. Uh, maybe I should have played the Diamonds. Hmm. I was going to say because because they play Echo, I want to put the draws on the table. But it looks like here they might have kept a slower hand, or they just want to go to second main phase. What are you doing? All right, so we get another turn before Karn the Great Creator. There's our Burning Wish. Yes. All right, so now we need one mana for Peer into the Abyss. We have one ring in hand. We'll draw off Bobble. We actually want to draw land, so I'm not going to thin one out. Another relay. Come on, Doc. Pretty please. Pretty please. Ding. All right, that's enough to Peer into the Abyss. We'll fetch with our Verdant Catacombs. Any land will do here. We'll grab Badlands. Play Rite of Flame. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond. We will hold control, cast Burning Wish, and then sacrifice diamonds for mana. I accidentally clicked blue on the first one, but it didn't matter because the second one gets to make black mana. We'll grab Peer into the Abyss. Cast it targeting ourselves. I twice in my life I have been narrating and then targeting my opponent, so I just say it out loud at this point. So we have won game number one, or I'm assuming we've won. I haven't actually seen our entire brand new hand. Oh, we have a burning wish. Yeah, we've won. Okay. Make a red, cast right of flame, tap the opal for a black, dark ritual, play a mox opal. You might have been saying you should have played Tinderwall and then sacrificed. Sure, I guess so, but it also just doesn't matter. We've already won the game. And we don't need to show our opponent that we're playing Tinderwall. Cast Burning Wish. Yes. Grab the 10 Drills of Agony. Target you for 17 Drills of Agony. Okay, so we've taken game number one versus Carnforge. An interesting thing about this deck is Abrupt Decay is actually terrible against them. So you don't want to board that in. We do want Thoughtseize and, whoops, didn't mean to click on that. Board out Veil of Summer. A lot of you might be thinking like, oh, they're an artifact-based colorless deck. I should want Abrupt Decay for Chalice of the Void. They don't play Chalice of the Void. They also don't play Trinisphere. They're essentially colorless storm. Interesting hand. We're an artifact away from greatness or a land. I mean, this hand has turn one potential. I'm going to keep it. Keep Ancient Tomb, Grim Monolith, so now they have, ooh, no key. All right, deck, we found the artifact, okay. So, Lotus Petal, Mox Opal, versus Bobble, and now we can Dark Ritual, Infernal Tutor, reveal a Rite of Flame, and this is just going to be a giant Galvanic Relay, I think. Uh, actually, hold on. This might be... Hold on. I forgot about the Black Off the Dark Ritual. This, I believe, is just lethal. But I can't be lethal. I don't have Black Black. So it can be a lethal Empty the Warrens, but it cannot be a lethal Tendrils of Agony. Okay, here we go. 20 Goblins. So the one ring would buy them a turn, because the one ring gives them protection from our Goblins. They tap for five. There's the one ring. We'll look at a random card in their hand. Basalt Monolith. So they've gained protection from everything until the end of their next turn. Or until the end of the beginning of their next turn. Whatever. They have protection. I can't deal them damage. You gain protection from everything until your next turn. Draw a card off our bobble. Thoughtseize? I, actually, Thoughtseize can't even target them. They have protection from everything. Be... I mean, there's no point in attacking. They, they won't deal them any damage. So they lose one life here. They go to 15. Saga moves up to two. They activate and draw two cards. They have three available mana right now, but they have eight cards in hand. They play Basalt Monolith going to 13 life. Another Ancient Tomb. So they still have five mana. That has not changed. Mystic Forge. One open mana. Things are looking good for us here. They remove the top card of their deck going to 10 life. They have one mana floating. Yeah, we just won the game. So, uh, yeah, we had a turn one. Tinderwall assisted in that. I don't know if Brainstorm would have gotten there, but it, it could have. I mean, obviously, Brainstorm gets to look at three more cards, but 
uh Tinderwall was decent so we are now three and one one match left to go with card hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at the epicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final round, once again, we're on the draw. Our opponent has revealed a Yorian Sky Nomad. They only have modern results, but all of them tend to be blue decks, so I don't think that they're on death and taxes. If they are, you know, we, we can deal with it. But I made the right judgment call. We kept the hand with Veil of Summer in action. And uh, yeah, it seems pretty good here. So we will play Wooded Felt Hills and pass. You could play out the Tinder Wall, but as I mentioned earlier in this video, Prismatic Ending and then Swords to Plowshares would punish you for that decision. We don't want to make those mistakes. So we'll take a draw step here. We draw Taiga. We'll play Badlands. Let's activate the Wooded Foothills. Choose to play a Bayou. And let's Infernal Tutor. See if this resolves. It does. I'm actually going to grab a Veil of Summer here. We have the Burning Wish. We want that to resolve. And I think the worst thing that could happen is our opponent has a ton of interaction. So we're going to take the avenue that punishes that. They have an end step brainstorm. This has been a little bit of an odd league. I mean, this is the first league since the drop of Lord of the Rings that I have not seen an Orcish Bowmaster. It's by far the most popular creature in Legacy right now, and we have not seen it in this league. I mean, our opponent could be on a weird five color pile, but I kind of doubt it. Three mana, they put Yuri into hand. We'll take a draw. Mox Opal. What to do, what to do, what to do. So I could write a flame. The problem is the tinder wall. Uh, I'd have to use a green. So let's write a flame. Burning wish. They know that I have double veil. They let it resolve. We will grab Galvanic Relay. Play Mox Opal. Tinder wall. And then we'll sacrifice the tinder wall, keeping the relay, and relay for six. They know that the last two cards in our hand are Veil of Summer. So we need mana, and then we need action off this. We've hit mana, bobble, bobble, relay, opal. That was fine. Like, it could have been better, but ultimately, this is good enough. It's another relay, and, you know, it's fine. I'm not going to complain. The one ring. We can't win the game this turn. But that's fine, because we're just setting up with a relay anyway. Another bobble. So let's do the thing where we play the artifacts. And we're going to want to use these baubles immediately. Because if they play a Narset, we want to not get punished. So, right of flame. Right of flame. Oh, I have to target myself. I can't target them with the baubles. Okay. Seiju is my top card. I don't mind that. Friendly reminder, the one ring is indestructible. If you try to destroy it, you will look like a clown. Alright, so we have... Triple protection win next turn. We have Veil of Summer here. We have two Veil of Summers here. We have Infernal Tutor, Lion's Eye Diamond. Things are looking good for the home team. Beautiful. Our opponent plays a Ponder. They activate the One Ring to draw two. They play a Flooded Strand, and it looks like they're passing the turn at this point. And now we get to have fun. Draw for turn. They have seven cards. Let's play the Besaju. We don't need to play a land that causes us to lose life. Lotus Petal, this will enable Metalcraft. Tap the Mox Opal. Play another Mox Opal. Let's not get bottlenecked on mana. Play another Lotus Petal. Veil of Summer from Exile. They're going to counter spell. We will cast a Veil of Summer. They force. We will cast another copy of Veil of Summer. Storm is currently eight. They force a will, pitching force will. They have two cards left in hand. That is fine by me. Okay, so we can play Lion's Eye Diamond. That is Storm 10. Sacrifice the diamond for black. Hold on. Um, Let's actually Burning Wish first. Burning Wish. Sacrifice for black. So even if they had another force here, I believe that we have them. I can also Thought Seize into Tendrils because we have seven mana. 
Let's do that. So this way, if they had a main deck veil this summer, I could empty. Endurance carpet of flowers. You tried. Burning wish. Yes. Grab the tendrils. The power of Galvanic relay. Sweet. That is game number one over hot band. Once again, I like bringing in a couple copies of Thoughtseize. All right, Quentin, I'm sorry. I know you wanted me to showcase Tinderwall here. I think boarding out Bobble when we don't have Brainstorm is kind of a mistake. I'm going to board out the weakest mana source in the deck, and that unfortunately is Tinderwall. And then we can board out one copy of Mox Opal. I think oh, right now I'm playing to win, and having spare mana in the deck isn't what we want versus control decks. We want that extra draw spell so we can try to find Galvanic Relay especially if we don't have access to Brainstorm. Sure, this seems like a reasonable hand. You get the Scry effect with the Bobble. You have Abrupt Decay for like a Canonist. Tons of mana. Okay. We will pass the turn. Land 3 isn't really what we wanted. We'll target ourselves. Colonel Tutor, I will keep that. Draw off the Bobble. And then before we draw for turn, let's thin a land out. We'll grab... Badlands. I don't know. Maybe I should have gotten a different one. Okay, play a land, pass the turn. Our opponent's going to activate both of their fetch lands. They grab Volcanic Island, Tropical Island. Savannah? They put Yuri into hand. Okay, sure. Let's search out another land. Let's grab Bayou. Draw for turn. Another land. Okay, pass. A little bit flooded here. They play basic planes, so this could be a Minsk and Boo. Or the Aerolingas for two. Okay. I think I'm going to Abrupt Decay one. I mean, they're going to become the Monarch, which is an issue for us. But I want to keep my life total up. And them slowing down their clock is pretty meaningful for us. So they'll attack. We go to 16. And they are now the Monarch. So they're going to drop to seven. We will search out another land. Grab a Taiga. Draw for turn. Another Rite of Flame. Pass the turn. And you might be saying, why not just jam? I don't think our opponent taps out after this many turns without having a force in there. All right, so we'll take two again. At this point, we just really need to find Galvanic Relay. That's how we win this game. They discard a Tundra. Dark Ritual. I guess I'll hold the Besage you for a turn. It can't hurt. And step they play in endurance so now they've increased their clock and my time is running out and why that's important is that containment priest okay so i believe they just shut off galvanic relay um yeah they have they have seven power five mana what are you doing for oh it's a fourth aerolingus am i just dead i think i'm dead oh it's hardcast lorian revealed okay Galvanic Relay is no longer good enough, so I would have to draw Thoughtseize or Veil of Summer, and we would need our opponent to only have one piece of Interact. We're asking for a lot here. Draw for turn. I guess so. Um, what are the odds they have no pieces of protection or disruption? Force of will, you know, uh, force of negation, all that stuff. Pretty slim, but we will cast our cards. We never drew anything this game. Dark Ritual, Lion's Eye Diamond, Infernal Tutor, Storm 7. They cast Forcible. Surprise, surprise. Okay, we can now go to game three. One of the downsides of not having Brainstorm in your deck. Okay, I guess, I don't know. It's fine. We will resubmit. On the play for game three. Double Abrupt Cave, super awkward. We will mulligan. Sure. Um... I think Dark Ritual is worse than Lotus Petal in this hand. Because Lotus Petal helps us relay. Or if we drew like Protection Spell plus Tutor. Okay, so Wooded Foothills. Bobble. Bobble. We'll pass. If we didn't board out Tinderwall, these would have been Tinderwalls, and this hand probably would have been a mulligan. Target them. Surgical Extraction. Okay, target them. Scalding Tarn. Now we draw two. I'm going to keep the fetch lane in case we draw into Mishra's Bobble. Ad Nauseam. Okay. So I could try to sneak an Ad Nauseam on their end step if they tap out, and that would leave them with just Force of Will. It's interesting. 
Or if they fetch on their turn before playing a land. They did not. Okay. Vernal Tutor. That doesn't help us here. We can just pass. They grab a Taiga and a Tundra. Containment Priest has entered the battlefield. So you might be saying, why would they board that in against you? It's simply because it's a creature that they don't have to tap out for, and that's it. It has flash, so they can play it on my end step. They get to untap. They get to stay protected. It makes sense. And you might have been thinking, why not ad nauseum in response to the Containment Priest? I don't think that's worth it because you're not beating Force of Negation. I'm looking for them to put Yuri into hand, cast a fairy, something like that. Wasteland? Okay. Playline Binding. We're going to respond to this. We'll grab Bayou, Badlands, Dark Ritual. It's a little awkward that we drew Infernal Tutor, just because the best target for our Infernal Tutor is in our hand. Ad nauseum. It has to be exactly Force of Will here. They Surgical our Lotus Petals. So they have four unknown cards in hand at this point. And Ad nauseum. It resolves. Love to see it. Okay. So we're at eight life. We need mana. We're at four. We haven't even revealed the land. There's nothing that kills me here. So I'll flip. Wow. That was terrible. That was actually terrible. Like, so bad. What did we draw for turn? Another burning wish. <laughs> oh. We're going to have to echo. That's our only choice here is Echo of Aeons. So bad. Bright of Flame. Veil of Summer. I can't believe we have to do this. We're dead to Containment Breeze. And I'm one mana short of Pier. What to do, what to do. I think it has to be Echo. Like, I could empty, but do we think empty is going to win? It has to be Echo. All right, so we will grab Echo of Aeons. Lion's Eye Diamond, Lion's Eye Diamond, blue, and then let's do black, Echo, I'm at two life. So I do have a land drop. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, geez Louise. Okay. Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, Ad Nauseam from two life. How we win this game? This ad nauseum reveals a pair of Lion's Eye Diamonds before we take two damage. Okay. So you're saying there's a chance. Okay. We're at one. There's one. Okay, we need one more Lion's Eye Diamond right here for the victory. Whew. Alternatively, we could flip like Lotus Petal, Mox Opal, and we might be able to Grape Shot for victory. All right, so... We have to flip. Bobble. That still doesn't change the math. We have to flip. Unfortunate. All right. So we lose match number five because Ad Nauseam failed us. Um, so we went three, two, which isn't the worst. Ultimately, I think you can't come. You can't replace a consistency card like Brainstorm with Tinderwall. It throws off the balance of the deck. We had to board very awkwardly throughout the entire league because we have so much mana in our deck, but we have very few payoffs outside of Infernal Tutor, Burning Wish, and then obviously Relay and Ad Nauseum, but you need more consistency cards. I guess that's my biggest issue, is that without Brainstorm, you end up with a hands like game number two, where you just draw one piece of action, but you never draw protection, or you draw protection, but never draw action. More of those games become the norm, and Brainstorm is a glue card. So you can't replace a glue card with just mana and expect everything to be completely fine we almost got through it we almost went 4-1 but ultimately we kind of got punished in the end quentin thank you for the donation deck i really do appreciate it everyone thank you for watching have a great day and as always keep storming if you enjoyed today's video you might also like the eternal glory podcast featuring myself brian cook alongside bosh and roll brian cobalt and thraven you phil gallagher as we discuss legacy concepts theories strategies and so much more we're available on all major podcast platforms as well as youtube also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.